Chapter 10. Adrian Accountant Answers. Delilah woke up to daylight streaming through her bedroom window. She stared around her room. The images and sounds of the dream still passing through her mind like a film strip. Incoherent screams of irrevocable pain and sorrow. White feathers drifted down to float on pools of blood. Bodies everywhere. Alistair, Alistair yelling in solitary and agony. The more she tried to recall it, the more it slipped away like sand through an outstretched fingers. This hadn't been the first time she had the dream. Shaking her head, she gave up trying to figure out what the dream meant. Pulling the covers off of herself, she got up and went into the bathroom. Oh, here's getting good. She filled the sink with cold water and splashed her face to help wake up. Looking up at her reflection in the mirror, she saw something just outside her window. Turning around, she headed back to investigate. It turned out to be Alistair, watching her in the bathroom. Wow. She slid the window open. Alistair tucked in his wings just enough to squeeze through the gap before unfurling them to their full span. You know, he spent all this time, like, hiding his wings. The moment, like, one person sees his wings, like, well, there's no sense in me wearing, like, clothing over it anymore. They dominated the room. Delilah was surprised to see such large wings could fold tight enough to be concealed on Alistair's back. After a minute or so, he pulled them in to rest on his shoulders. How did you sleep? Alistair asked, holding out his arms. Delilah said nothing, but walked forward and hugged him, savoring the scent of vanilla. <sighs> oh, vanilla. Alistair stretched his wings and wrapped them loosely around her, probably feeling pretty guilty that he checked on four girls last night and not Delilah. Delilah let the warmth seep in. See, check that out. We got the vanilla, we got the warmth. He's like one big giant hot cocoa mug full of vanilla. She had received so many hugs from Alistair. So many hugs. They were so warm and so comfortable. She felt like she could just stay in Alistair's embrace forever. But Alistair always pulled away after several long moments of affectionate cuddling. Alistair pulled away so his fingers could still wrap around her elbows. He stood there, staring at her face, his eyes filled with emotions she couldn't identify. Is something wrong? You look worried, Alistair inquired. I was just about to ask you the same question, countered Delilah. It's nothing, said Alistair, not meeting her eyes. Delilah stared at Alistair. This was the first time Alistair had shown that something was bothering him. It wasn't natural. Not like the wings on his back, or his giant glass arm, or his giant scar of his eye, or the fact that he left for two years and everyone still remembered him when he came back. He usually let his cool patience hide all worries, but this was different. Alistair pulled away and stared out the window at the rising sun. His stance looked relaxed, but it had a definite rigidness to it. A hidden tension that seemed to emanate from his being. So, probably not all that relaxed at all. Delilah held out a hand to touch Alistair's shoulder, but lowered it. Alistair sometimes had to gather his thoughts before he explained things. I'll just wait for him to speak! Alistair turned around. I'm going to need to explain some things. Take a seat. This might take a while. In fact, use the bathroom now, because I'm not stopping once I start. Delilah sat down on the bed. Alistair grabbed her desk chair, swiveled it around, and sat down. Taking a calming breath, he began. I'm not human, Delilah. I'm from a race of people. One of two that was supposedly created by the god Aeon. Long ago, when Aeon created Atria, she created beings called the Baelor. But the Baelor didn't want to stay servants to Aeon. After nearly destroying world, Aeon banished them to a different dimension called the Abyss. After the Baelor were gone, Aeon created us, the Devas, a benign race who closely resembled humans. We rebuilt everything and were obedient to Aeon, which suited us as well. Then, somehow, the Baelor figured out how to leave the Abyss and attacked everyone. They probably just realized the door was left unlocked or something, I don't know. The war lasted for 13 centuries, going back and forth like a ping pong game before a final attempt of peace was implemented. During the peace, during the peace meeting, a battalion of Baelor snuck through and destroyed the Tower of Eternity, the resemblance of Aeon. After such betrayal, all discussion of a peace treaty was gone. We locked all the Baelor again, but with a price. And Bob Barker's gonna tell us what it is right now. Ain't that right, Bob? <clears throat> Some of the Devas began to blame others that diplomacy hadn't been fully exercised. Others thought that the only solution was to wipe out all the Baelor, no matter the cost. Sides were taken and violence ensued. With one last attempt to regain peace, I unsplit the world. On the lower half, the Elios grew and flourished. <laughs> in the brilliant sunlit tropical environments, and learned many sciences. The upper half was a home to the Asmodians. 
a dark people whose ambitions were to punish all those who deemed weak, seeking the predominant sentinel sentinels of Atria. Atria was on the brink of civil war. Laws were passed that required all Davis to learn magic and combat. So how did you come to be here then? I thought you lived with your family for 18 years. Delilah's mind was reeling. I don't know who my parents were, said Alistair, continuing like Delilah had said nothing. The first mem- Wait. If he's continuing like Delilah had said nothing, why did he answer her question? The first memory I can recall is walking around the academy in sanctum. Being an orphan, I couldn't really relate to anybody, and not being rich, I couldn't screw the rules. One of the instructors became interested on why I didn't hang out with the other kids. She took me under her wing and began training me. Master Jade taught me many things, from hand-to-hand -hand combat to casting spells. Soon I was ready to become an acolyte, or student. When you become an acolyte, you're put through a series of tests that help you figure out what you would do in different situations. I had quite a different result than many masters believed. I was given the honor... I was giving the honor to train as a warder. What's a warder? Asked Delilah. A warder is a guardian. They usually are used by dipl diplomats, emiss emissaries, etc. as bodyguards. They are considered the elite soldiers, masters at magic, combat, and strategy. I worked hard, taking major risks on my part to separate myself from the rest. After 20 years of hard work, I was given the title of Master Warder. Then things went downhill. There was a complication with a younger student which resulted in her death. The High Council Masters banned me from the Sanctum for 70 years, so I came here. 20 years? How is that possible? You only look 18, said Delilah, bewildered. Okay, first of all, what? That's just stupid. 18, you can... If you're 20 years old, you can totally look 18. And second of all, I said 70, not 20. You're not even paying attention, are you? Ah, that's because Atria runs on a different time stream than the rest of the world. I calculated that one day here equals one week there. I'm 18 in this world, but I'm much older in Atria. How much older? I believe I'm about 126 years old by now. Delilah's eyes were the size of dinner plates, her mouth hanging open, totally taken aback. Realizing that her mouth was open, she closed it. She does that a lot. Alistair chuckled. You said there was a complication with your younger student. What happened? Delilah posed. I imagine it was, you know, something kind of like Blue Magnum. <sighs> that is something for a different time, said Alistair, his gaze stony, indicating that the subject was closed and that the writer hadn't decided what that was about yet. So what's been bothering you? inquired Delilah. Since I was young, I've been taught to protect others. My training amplified this lesson until it has become a second nature. For the past while, I have been watching over you and others. Last night, I went out to check on you all. Alistair stopped speaking, and his composure collapsed. His breathing became ragged and shallow, like a man in pain. He stood up and walked to the window, taking steady breaths. Delilah had never seen Alistair so distraught. Walders are connected to the protectors emotionally. Walders are connected to the pro protect traits emotionally. Like a sixth sense. Emotional disturbances defect, affect us. When Mike died, Annalise's distress and grief was augmented in me. I saw something that made me lose my temper. If that happens again, the consequences could and will be dire. He broke off again, his voice cracking. Delilah moved in in front of Alistair and looked into his face. Alistair stared back, a single tear sliding down his cheek. What a wuss. Delilah hugged Alistair, who buried his face in her hair. Hmm. She hasn't showered yet. Delilah's presence seemed to soothe Alistair as much as his presence soothed her. They stood there, wrapped in each other, the silent communication of love passing between them. Before I go, could you do something for me? Alistair asked. What? Look outside, he replied. <laughs> Delilah looked at the morning sky, which had brightened as they had talked. The sky was cleared except for one large cloud hovering below the sun. As Delilah watched, the cloud shifted, revealing holes in the middle. A moment later, sunlight poured through the gaps, making a hidden message distinguishable. It said, I would be honored if you would go to the senior ball with me. Delilah felt the smile slide onto her face as she turned to Alistair. His wan smile that he saved just for her was in place. Of course I will, Delilah said before embracing Alistair again. Alistair chuckled softly in her ear. <laughs> 
end of chapter 10.